Hey guys, welcome to Respiratory 2140. Um, this video we are going to go through bedside PFTs or bedside pulmonary function tests. There are the big pulmonary function labs that do very thorough pulmonary assessments, um, but sometimes at the bedside we need a quick assessment to check the function of our patient lungs and also to assess the volume of what's going on with your patient. So we are, in this video, we're going to go over three of them. Um, and there's one more called the incentive spirometer, but I'm including that in a separate video that is also for this week's skills. The first one we are going to, so some indications that we might need to do a PFT, a bedside PFT, varies with each different pathology of why we're doing it. The... NIF, the first one I'm going to show you. So this is a disposable. It's This is a newer variety. We have some of the old manometers in lab that we will show you. This is new and what we're going towards because we don't want to reuse as much equipment as possible um, to avoid infection control. So this is commonly used for neurological patients such as Guillain-Barre and Myasthenia gravis. We want to be able to monitor patient's diaphragmatic strength. We want to make sure that the that diaphragm is functioning appropriately. We're getting the negative force we need to initiate a breath so that if our patient is struggling with taking that breath in or weakening of the diaphragm, we know we need to intervene. You can, if your patient needs it, use nose clips if it, they're having a hard time coordinating because a lot of this has to do with coaching. You have to coach your patient the best you can. So a few pieces to show you guys. We have the mouthpiece. Your patient will place their mouth. We have the occlusion button here at the top, which while they are performing the maneuver, you will have pushed down. And then finally, we have the manometer here. So this one, since we are doing a negative force, this tells us our negative force for when our patient takes that breath in so that we can assess the negative force of the diaphragm. Typically, negative 30 or, or more negative is the best range. That's where we want it. But sometimes if you have someone that's very weak, extremely sick, we just want to make sure that they're staying in a similar zone where they happen. So there's a little knob on the manometer. It's, as you can see, it can move. And there's two arrows. So the black arrow is the one that will move and it will move the red arrow. It will come up and it will catch it and move the arrow. So, and that will stay there to wherever, whatever setting the patient hits. Um, if we need to perform it multiple times, we'll use the same equipment on the same patient. You take the knob and you can adjust the red arrow back to zero for your test. So when I do it, I like to, um, really involve my patient, educate them, tell them why we're doing it. And then I'll tell them to, okay, take a relaxing breath out. <sighs> this will be placed in their mouth and they'll make a nice tight seal with their lip around there. And then either you as the RT can press the occlusion button. And then the patient will take the deepest breath in they can. I tell them, okay, take a big deep breath in as deep as you can. And then you can either hold there or up top here, either way. And then that will give us our negative force. So, for example, we'll do one. So, we're all set. Our pressure gauge is to zero. We'll occlude. And then tell the patient to take a breath out. And then take a big deep breath in. So... Because I am healthy, I reach to negative 60. <laughs> um, it will feel like your patient is breathing against a wall. I tell them it's going to feel like I'm just putting my hand over your nose and your mouth and you're breathing against it, but that will give us your pr negative pressure that we need. And then we can adjust our dial back. Most of the time, you, unless you get excellent numbers, um, but it is best practice to do the best value out of three. So perform this three times and then whatever the best value of three is, is your best value to record and document. Okay, so that is for diaphragmatic strength. 
Next one we're going to talk about is a peak flow. Um, this is most commonly used with obstructive patients. This will be done before and after administration of a bronchodilator. And some patients will use this to mon for daily monitoring of their pulmonary health. Um, that's what these are for. Um, patients that have recorded, we will set a green zone, a yellow zone, and a red zone um, to tell it if they're in danger, if they're doing okay, or if they're doing great. And that is personalized with each patient. Most of the time, um, out on the sides we have liters per minute, and then this dial that easily moves up and down. So before you perform a peak flow, you'll put it at the bottom, and your patient can either hold on to the side of the peak flow, or you can give them a nice little handle. So this, the peak flow, what it is doing is it's helping monitor obstruction. So we want to assess how our patient is doing on exhalation, the force of their exhalation. So you'll have your patient take a deep breath in, and then I tell them, pretend like they're the big bad wolf and blow all the air out of their lungs as much as they can. And your patient most likely will cough. I'm just going to warn you guys now, that's very common. So deep breath in and blow all the air out of your lungs in a big forceful gust of wind. I tell them, don't make it slow. Make it fast and make it forceful. So big deep breath. So we make sure our dials to the zero. Big deep breath in and blow all the way out. That way we can see where they are at on liters per minute. Just as with the NIF, we want to do best of three for our patients. Um, and then before your next one, you'll just bring it down again to the base. We do this before and after a bronchodilator administration so that we can assess how effective the medication is and if it even is an indication for your patient at times. Okay, the last one I'm going to show you guys is one that's not commonly seen but it is on your boards so we're going to talk about it. It's called a right respirometer. Um, so when we breathe, one breath, inhalation, exhalation, is called a tidal volume. Uh, tidal volume times the rate, how many times a minute your patient breathes, rate times tidal volume equals minute volume. This will become a lot clearer when we get into mechanical ventilation. But what we're doing here is we are assessing the size of the tidal volume and the minute volume. You'll put a filter on the end of the corrugated tubing here. As you can see, it has a little arrow for exhalation, probably a little hard to see. The power button turns the right respirometer on, and then this button resets it if we need to reset. So what you'll do is you'll have your patient have a filter here. They'll breathe for one full minute. While they're doing that one full minute, you will count the respirations, and you will be able to see how many liters your patient is breathing, and then their tidal volume. So the right respirometer helps you figure out minute volume and tidal volume while you count the respiratory rate. We'll let you guys play with this one in lab. Again, it's not commonly used in the hospital because we have other means such as um, different equipment to help us monitor that, but it is on your board. So that's why we're going to get familiar with this. Okay. That is bedside PFT for right now. Um, come with lots of questions and get ready to learn and get hands-on with the equipment. Okay, thanks guys.